Hello, hello. This is Johannes Watri from Holtern. I had a, a, a request from in, in the YouTube channel regarding the video I made for uh, ads, Google Ads Consent Tracker, which is kind of affecting the European and Great Britain commercial areas. So we have to request GDPR consent from all users to actually show ads kind of affects the uh, application monetization. So there are a lot of uh, Java developers searching this similar uh, solution that I did with Kotlin, these two classes. So I figure even though I'm not a Java developer, but hey, I have a cool sidekick. It's called Chat, Chat GPT, and it's been on my to-do list to a kind of a make a video of uh, potential use cases, and I'm actually gonna now translate these two classes, the Consent Tracker and my GDPR, and I'm 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 gonna let the Chat GPT hallucinate the heck out of these classes, and we'll see how good it does in in the uh, translation, then we're going to modify the, uh, the actual code just a bit so that we have a parallel Java classes for these ones. And they're going to, I'm going to replace these with the Java classes into runtime code. And if it works in the actual application, it's a success. So then we can give the high five to chat JPT for hallucinating Java versions of these ones. If not, I take no responsibilities. Anyhow, I'm gonna share the uh, the GIST files of the original Kotlin versions versus the ChatGPT Java versions. And uh, you can compare and use any one of those. Let's start with the Consent Tracker class. So if you were not familiar, the sole purpose of this class is to actually figure out if user truly consented all, all the way or just pretty much half the way so that you can get some ads or pretty much it's a failure to consent and you lose the ads. So this is kind of a figures out if it's truly valid. So go and see, I'll, I'll link up the, uh, the actual uh, original video so you can get more familiar how the, you're supposed to use this but let's create parallel classes in here this time they need to be Java classes and uh, let's call it Java consent tracker <clears throat> like so okay it's empty and now let's ask our trusted sidekick to translate all of this into Java. Translate and let's feed that. Okay, let's see. What kind of a result will we have in here? Okay, it is generating the code. The m typically what I've seen, the more code you fetch in here, the more hallucination you might start to get. And it kind of a swings some of the functions totally off. But I don't know. Let's see if it can handle this class. Okay, seems like um, it's doing something. Okay, taking a little bit longer than I figure. Maybe there is some uh, trafficking traffic going on at the server side. Seems pretty solid. I don't see any fizzy content in here. Now we need to take this one into our code. So we have now Java content tracker. Of course, I do need to uh, 
modify the naming again in here so it was java constant tracker we have to have now a constructor to get the context into this so that's more typical java way to handle and i can use my kotlin classes and that just import these ones in here and anything that you see in here regarding logging they are my custom logging methods you use anything you like preferences manager this is kind of a the uh, yeah shared preferences belongs as a part into this constant tracker wow i don't know what happened in here remove unnecessary continue hmm that's part of the uh, the hallucination that the um, chat gpd can do i i once i pretty much seen actual function co code functions being replaced with comments regarding into some pages but uh, this seems like it just might work cool it's not validated by any means but now we can do the same with my gdpr class so quickly to recap the purpose of this my gdpr class is that we are actually going to use this from the activity so this is the uh, activity driven class to check anything we need and this is the class also that's going to be using the uh, the content tracker to uh, see if it's truly valid or not it's also been used in in the activity okay we'll get into that in time so let's create another java class in here and let's call it java gdpr yep okay now let's bring forward the content of this code into our trusted sidekick again and let's hope Ooh, i don't think it can do anything right now not yet translate this kotlin code into java like so booyah okay let it figure out okay seems valid seems valid mm -hmm. cool that was faster it didn't kind of a stumble in here at all yep and we're gonna take that into java gdpr and paste and then we need to import a lot of stuff in here this one and let's rename java java gdpr then again we have to fix the uh, main class constructor in here because it needs the context okay like so constant track information constant form and yep here is a an error let's figure that out soon activity i'm just gonna prepare every import that we are missing like so okay we are Oh, we need to replace with getter. Oh, yeah, that's Java world import. We are missing something crucial over there. And then, okay, in here, to me, it seems like it started hallucinating. Yeah, it's making switch cases. Let's change those into, yep. And replace with getter replace with getter
Yeah, we are missing access into that. Get consent permission. Where is this referring? Okay, we cannot use that kind of a variable. That's interesting. So we need to, yeah, okay. I again, replace with getter. Length. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's how Java works. So Java cannot handle these um, default constructor values directly. We have to use them in here also as so it will work. Hmm. I believe we might be able to now solve this issue. So the, any initialization we have, that's final. That's final, but the context doesn't yet exist. I believe we do need to now say after this one, after the con class initialization constructor or whatever it is, in here we have to say like so. That cannot be final, I believe. And um, can we now say just like that? Yeah, we can delete in here. Typical Java code. Yeah, that should work. Now also toes need to be initialized in here after we have the the, uh, the context. Yep. Cool. Yes. 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 And we have wrong order in our parameters. So, hmm. okay, a lot of uh, work to be done in here. So reactivity, then we have params. View model seems to be first. Okay, that's done. This one, I just do not know why it doesn't work. Constant information. Is it available? I need to dig up into that, these ones just a little further. Why is it, it is not working in here? Okay, so I finally figured this one out. So in Kotlin, we can pretty much call our constant information. Is constant form available? like like so but this is an error in the uh, chat gpt okay it has to be used as a function so that's the way it's gonna work not too bad i mean I, actually really good translation i just couldn't figure out because sorry guys i'm not like true Java developer. It's not, doesn't come from the backbone. So I think we need to now prepare this, the use of these classes in our application um, modules. So I'm just gonna make them as a single tom and Java GDPR. And we can through here inject the application context because they are using context after all. Okay. And this will be singleton also Java constant tracker. And we just say so. Okay. Now we can start replacing our actual classes of GDPR and constant tracker in the runtime code. So let's begin.
So now we need to replace our runtime code for the my GDPR. I pretty much scouted that it is used in the main activity. And we are fetching it through the coin module. Hmm. So I think I'm just gonna say in here get and it's gonna be Java GDPR like so. There's gonna be errors because the functions cannot be used this way with Java classes, so we need to uh, delete those ones, delete those ones like so. And uh, it's hinting move lambda arguments out of parentheses. Booyah. Okay. Still it is hinting. Okay, now it is correct. Now we have lambda function and we have context view model constant tracker. That function seems to be using our Java class correctly. Okay. Then we have our update constant. Again, we do need to uh, do this and I believe they are, yeah, they are crossed, definitely crossed. Let's see the order. Activity, geography, view model. Okay, let's switch these ones. So Java really isn't forgiven in how you use the, the parameters for the functions. They just always need to be in the correct place. Okay, cool. That is working. We might have error in here too. Let's see. Like so. And the lambda function move out of parentheses. Cool. Now we have um, these functions, the functions to track the actual uh the no to run the uh constant to get the constant from the user seems to be correct it is fully in use now let's do the same for our kotlin constant tracker where do we use this one hmm Okay, okay, coin, okay, let's do the activity first, anything we have in the activity. Okay, do we have it in here? Now I need to bounce, bounce just a little bit. Yes, we do, okay. So let's do this first and then the other ones. This is the main activity. So get Java constant tracker. Cool. And let's fix the errors. Anything we have in here. I believe it's the same again that we have activity view model what else? Constant tracker and runnable. Like so. Hmm, this is interesting. Require constant tracker found Java constant tracker. Okay. Reuse. Oh yeah, we ha we have wrong class initializer in here. It needs to be now Java constant tracker. So we gotta go back all the way in here to Java constant tracker. So something something to note that when we 
drove the chat GPT, it is still referencing the original Kotlin class names. So the Kotlin class is wrong in here. Same, I do need to go load form. And we need to say also in here Java consent tracker. Boy, we have a lot of errors. Java consent tracker. Okay, we might just get it. Java consent tracker. Again. Java consent tracker. Hmm. At the end of the day, when I'm finished, we shouldn't have any references from the original classes into the runtime code. Now let's see. Cool, we don't have any errors in here, but we do need to, uh, yeah, use property access syntax. Now we can get it like so. Yeah, we can now get that also like so. Like so. We are modifying the uh, like so. Let's double check this code. Sorry, this code. Is consent form available? Everything seems to be correct. Cool. Now I just need to uh, double check where do we have this one in use? Find usage. It is still being imported in. Let's just do like this and we can see no errors anymore. It can stay there. It can stay in the coin module. But okay, in our service application, we do now need to uh, track these errors. I'm just going to take a shortcut. It's going to be Java content tracker. Now I'm operating currently in a service class. So you don't need to worry about these ones. But I do. Hmm. Okay, I do because my application is using service to uh, run a lot of functions in the background. Cool. Seems, yeah, we can use. Is it valid? Okay, now we can actually prepare the simulator or an actual device. And we get to test if it works. If we get the, uh, the request for the, uh, the, for the user to consent and agree, all perfect. Let's test. I managed to start up the app and it's kind of a working halfway. It seems we ended up in a, in a result of it's now broken. So even if I say I do consent, we do not get the real consent status. As you can see, it's, it's not changing into valid. We, I'm seeing that I do live correctly in the GDPR. So that's in fact, I live in Finland, which is part of the EU, but we don't get any permission changes throughout our requests. Again, it's going to be always the same. If I say I agree, no changes whatsoever. And uh, it's even if I say no, I don't, it's always the same. I just quickly took a look 
comparison of the original content tracker where we are has running through the has content or legitimate interest for kind of a multi-parameter function going through all of these values and it is totally different in here it this also seems to be as a, a, a for loop but we don't use one of the key values in here and we have an empty if body so <laughs> what the heck is this function actually doing pretty much nothing so we need to narrow it down and maybe reattempt. Let's see. This function uses has attribute. Okay, has attribute. Maybe if I just maybe if I just pretty much take this one and that one has attribute as a pair. Let's retry. Maybe the uh, chat GPT can handle this one. Into Java. Okay, we do need to uh, remove the middle function. Yeah, yeah. didn't have any function whatsoever. What is the result for this one? Okay, we did take that off then. Let's see. This is pretty far-fetched. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't work. Okay, we need to have a list in there. Hmm. Oh boy, it seems... It seems it made... It made up a whole lot of parameters. There was no... Google ID. Yes, there is Google ID. What the heck it is using? Okay. I need to now rebuild all of these functions again. It seems this class has been corrupted badly at this point. Okay. Remove unnecessary continue. Wow, maybe ChatGPT isn't that good after all. Ah, oh, has constant four. Now, which one is this using? This one is using has attribute as well. Okay, has constant, has constant. Okay, I think. I might need to, uh, let's try this way again. So I do know my, these are the original functions. So let's use these ones. And let's try to replace all of these here. Yep. Goodbye. Okay, let's see. This is going to be my final attempt. 
then I need to uh, probably do the work by myself. A lot of debugging. If I fail, I fail. That's it. Yeah, I'm getting the same result. But let's see. Okay. Let's put it back in here. Like so. Like so. At least we don't seem to have that crazy Google ID anymore passed in to in here as a parameter. That was that was a bad one. I don't know about this one. Doesn't make sense to me at least in here. Almost like yeah, it's like continue else return false. If if it hasn't doesn't have anything, then it's just gonna return true. Yeah, let's let it be. Okay. Booyah. Let's restart the app. Do we get any difference this time? So that's our current status. GDPR area true. It is not valid. We haven't allowed anything yet. Okay. And uh, we're going to now say consent okay we i say i do not consent it shouldn't accept anything so we can see in here is it valid false it's not valid we haven't allowed anything and now we test halfway consent let's just pick up random parameters in here so I'm not going to bring us, it doesn't make sense. This should fail, totally fail. I don't say accept all, I say accept the selected. Cool. We didn't fell into the uh, trap of the uh, false acceptance this time. And now the ultimate test is that we say let's consent to all. Super. Oh Lord, look at that. We have the ads permit, we have personalized ads permit in the GDPR and the true status of the is constant valid is true. And we're getting the ads. Booyah. Okay, guys. Now, I will release the gist files that I managed to uh, hallucinate with Jet uh, GPT and it is untested for sure you have to do your own aerial testing to use it actually in your application but um, you can compare the uh, the original GIST files from the Kotlin that I will be putting on the side and then you can see what I did with the Java versions and if you truly want to get familiar how I actually use these classes in in the uh, activity please see the original kotlin coding video because that's the one that i actually kind of uh, implemented this into my app but it seems to work we'll be back <laughs>